Welcome back to DLTV. I'm Veronica Belmont. Hey, and I'm Robert Heron. And so you've got some information on folding at home, exactly what it is you're folding. Yes, indeed. We are the, we're very big advocates of the folding at home project. And it's basically a way of using those extra cycles in your computer to help out with a project that's dedicated toward exploring, you know, what proteins are doing and how they work mm -hmm. and what can go wrong and basically how to avoid what goes wrong. And we had a little uh, trip down to Stanford University to talk to Professor Pondy, who runs the project. Oh, cool. And I believe we have a little video to show off with an interview for him explaining exactly what it is that proteins are doing and how they do work. So let's take a look at that. Could you explain the protein folding process in the animation right behind you? So what we're looking at here is um, a, a, one of the sort of landmark simulations from Folding at Home. It's a very long simulation. And the visualization does not show all the detail, because if I showed all the detail, you wouldn't be able to see everything. So for one thing, I've removed all the water from the visualization. There's all this water that goes into the calculation, because proteins in space aren't very interesting, but proteins in water are the way things work. But if I showed you all the water, you wouldn't be able to see any, everything. Also, in this protein, I've sort of colored things in different ways, that some stuff is, is solid and some stuff is shown in these little sticks. These things are the amino acids that come off the protein backbone. And the protein is made up of like a chain of different amino acids, and each one has a different chemical characteristic. And I'm only showing the ones that, I, that are interesting for the purpose of this movie in Spaceville. These are the ones that are hydrophobic, um, uh, the ones that are aromatic uh, from, in terms of chemical language. And what we're looking at here in this movie is that the protein actually did not fold so far. It's actually collapsed into something kind of random and, and misfolded. And in some ways, it's kind of a lot like someone who doesn't know how to parallel park, that's trying to parallel park, and that they, you know, they get into the space and they're kind of stuck there. And once you're stuck, you can't really sort of just fix it. You, you basically have to do what you can or basically come out of the parking spot and come back in. Once it breaks out, it's actually going to come out and then, kind of like a drunk guy trying to parallel park, he's going to try to come back in and it's actually not going to get it right on the second time and then come back out and come back in. And every time it does it, though, it gets something a little more right, as we see in this movie. And that actually helps it fold on its way. So right now it's still basically sitting in this first collapse state, although it's been exploring lots of different possibilities. So this is what we're seeing here, is that this is one of the first unfolding events in this part of the simulation. And um, it sort of came out of the parking spot and came back in. Uh, it came out again and it's coming back in. And now it's basically uh, trying to do things, uh, trying to get to its folded state. And certain parts of what it's doing are right and certain parts are wrong. Um, and it's, it's just trying its best to, to get things into the right spot. It's going to go through this actually a couple different times. And it's actually already starting to make some progress. So that interaction actually is correct. And some of this stuff, this actually, it's hard f to see it on uh, very visually, but this is actually forming an alpha helix right now. So this part's correct, and this part's correct. And actually now it's formed this triple part of the core, so that part's correct. And it just really needs to just be able to put these final pieces together, and actually, and that's when it does that. So it got each of those pieces, and finally just sort of flipped around and locked in. And now it's actually basically folded. This part is actually intrinsically unstructured, so it's going to flop around like a flag. But this part of the protein is, is the part that's folded, and it's pretty rigidly sitting there. Unlike the rest of the movie, where it's sort of moving around, here it's basically locked into the right state. Thank you, Professor Pondy. And, of course, we've got to do the quick update for Team DLTV for the Folding at Home project. Uh, currently, we're still holding it uh, 20th position here. Let me take a look real quick on Not our bad. stats page. Not bad at all. We're about to break into the top. Uh, we're about to break into 19. We've got them almost here. There we are, 20th position in the world team rankings. Oh, no, you're beating Team and Gadget. That's the team I'm folding on. And Gadget, those punks. I better fold harder. They're going down. <laughs> oh, they're, go they're, they're gone. <laughs> the Dutch Power Cows, they were tough. Dutch Power Cows. They were tough. That's a great team they name. Were, they were worthy opponents, but we're, we're behind. We're past they them fight now dirty, too. I heard. The P2P community, we're almost past them, and then we're on our way. We've got pretty easy going all the way to 15, and then it, then it gets really tough on us there. But anyway, our team's doing great. I want to point out, too, on the download page, they've redone the Folding at Home website, actually. It is 
a pretty nice update. Take a quick look here. I just want to show off here on the, this is the download page. When you do surf to the download page, now it provides a recommended software based on information furnished by your browser, da 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 da. It actually provides recommended downloads for you. So you have your uh, graphical client, and as we always recommend, the uh, console only version if you can. However, the graphical client's kind of nice because you can run it as a screensaver if you don't want it running 24 7. I know usually most people run it when they're not doing other tasks, kind of have it running in the background, but what happens if you're doing other, running other programs? but you still want to keep your folding continuing. Is it really going to take a hit on your performance? It, it can. If you can run a single instance of it and dedicate it to a single CPU, that mm-hmm. might be one way to do it because then you'd use like half of your computer's power. But otherwise, this is, a, this is essentially a very stressful program. It, it, if you allow it to, it will take over all of your CPU power and it will cut into any kind of productivity you're trying to get done and it will, you will notice it. Right. And or you'll hear your computer trying to cool itself off. So that's something to be aware of. It is, a, it is, it is a stressful program. You know, it would make a really great Halloween costume to tape a bunch of balloons to yourself and kind of wiggle around and be a, a protein that's folding. <laughs> I'm not hydrophobic. I'm not hydrophobic. <laughs> I want to fold better.